Back in episode number 138, I covered internationalization. But what if you want to use a different backend instead of the plain old YAML file that's the default? Well, let me show you how in this episode. For example, let's say I have this page here, and let's say I want to change this welcome text so it supports different languages. Well, it's very easy to add internationalization support in Rails through the translate method. So here I am in my view file, I can just edit this welcome, and instead call translate, and we'll just add a key here called welcome. But the problem is, then I need to go into a YAML file for each of the languages I want to support, and then add the key inside of there. And this gets pretty tedious, and generally you don't want programmers managing all the locales and internationalization information. So it would be nice if we could supply a web interface for managing all this so others can do it instead of the programmers. Thankfully, the internationalization gem supports several different back ends, which means we aren't restricted to just using YAML. We can basically use any database we want to handle all the translations. Now the default backend is the simple backend you see right here, and this is what handles the loading of the YAML file and managing the translations through that. Uh, the one I want to take a look at, especially in this episode, is the key value backend, which will allow us to use basically any key value store for managing the translations. Now there's also an active record store which was extracted out into a separate gem, so I'll leave it up to you to look into this if you're interested in it, but I don't think active record is really the best way to handle this because translations need to be accessed quite frequently in every page of your application likely. So this is something you likely want in memory instead of in a SQL database. Now you could use some caching to get around this issue, but then you have to worry about clearing the cache and so on. And so this is why I think a key value store is a nice way to go, and it's what I'll be demonstrating here in this episode. Now if you take a look at the internal um, content of this key value backend, you can see that there's some comments at the top here explaining how to use this. So to change the backend, you just have to use this line right here, and you can just set the backend to a new key value instance, and then you can pass any key value store you want into this, and it will be immediately used for all translations um, as the backend. Now that store, it just needs to respond to three simple methods. There's the square brackets for accessing a key value, and then for setting a key value, and then the keys method for accessing all the keys. And thankfully, most key value stores in Ruby uh, just automat automatically support this interface, so it just works seamlessly. So let's change the backend in this application so we don't have to deal with this YAML file anymore for internationalization. I'm going to create a new file here under the initializers directory, so it's a new initializer. I'll call it i18n backend.rb. And then I'll just paste in the example line that I showed in the comments earlier for changing the backend. Now, I'm not going to be using Tokyo Cabinet here. Um, instead, just to get us up and running quickly and for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use a simple empty hash. Now, you won't, don't want to do this normally, but I just want to show you that any key value store basically will work. So now if we restart our application and then go to our welcome page, you can see our title doesn't look quite right anymore. And if you view the source, you can see there's the problem. It says translation missing. So the problem is we're now using a new backend. So even though this is in the YAML file, it's not going to work because it's using an empty backend now. So we need to supply a web interface where other users can come and fill in that backend with additional translations. So I'll just do this fairly quickly here and generate a new controller. I'll call it translations and then give it an index action here. Now I want this new controller to be like a resource. So inside my routes file, I'll change the generated route and say resources, translations, just like that. So inside the index action of this controller, I want to display the existing translations. So I need a way to fetch the translations hash that we supplied in the backend store. So I can do that by calling i18n backend, and then calling store on this, and that'll give us the um, hash object that we passed in in the initializer. So now inside the view, we need to display those translations. And I'll just paste in some code to do this. Basically, it just loops through each of the translations in the hash and outputs the key and value inside a list here. Pretty simple. But we still need a way to create new translations. So below this, I'm just going to add a form and paste in some code here that does this. So this is a new form, which will go to the translations path. So it'll end up going to create action of our controller, which I'll create in a minute. 
basically we have three fields here, one for the locale, which will be like English, EN for English, and the key, which will be the, the view key that we're going to use, and the value, which will be the translated text. So let's add that action. So back in our controller, we'll add that create action, which gets called with the form. And here we want to add a new translation. And through the i18n gem, you can call backend.store translations to add it. And the first argument here is the locale, which is passed in through the form. And then the next one here is a, a hash, which you can pass any information you want. So we'll just pass in our key and values into here. Our key and then our value parameter. And then the final argument you want to pass in here is escape and set it to false because it defaults to true, which means it's going to escape the periods inside the key, but we want them to properly um, handle the keys so that periods separate them as um, different nestings. And so we want to also redirect to our uh, translations URL with a notice saying um, added translation. There we go. All right, so let's give this a try. We have on our home page that missing translation there. So let's try adding a translation by going to our translations page we just created. And we can add a translation here doing the English locale. We can supply the welcome key and then say hello world as our value. And submit this and add our translation. There it appears. And if we go back to our home page, you can see that it now says hello world because it's using that as the backend now, no longer needing to use the YAML files. So this is working really nicely, but the big problem is that we're using a Ruby hash for our key value store. This means if we simply restart our Rails app, we're going to lose all the translations that we've added. So we need to have something that's more persistent that exists outside of the Rails app. So here I'm going to demonstrate this using Redis. Uh, this is just a simple persistent key value store. So we first need to install Redis. If you're on a Mac, I highly recommend using Homebrew and you can do so with a simple brew install Redis command. And then after that, follow the instructions to start up the server. And then next, you just need to go to your gem file and add the Redis gem there and make sure to run the bundle command to get it installed. And then going into our initializer, we can change our hash just to use a simple Redis database. So redis.new, and that's really all that's necessary. You might wanna specify a database option here and change which database is used depending on development and test and production environments. But here I'll just keep it simple and just always use the first database. Now because we changed our key value store, I'll also need to fix a few things in the translations view as well because here we're looping through the contents of that translations hash. But now this is going to be a Redis database instead. So we'll need to um, change this up a bit because it doesn't respond to each. So we'll say um, translations keys each, and then for each of those keys, we'll just fetch the value of it just by calling translations with the square brackets. All right, so now when we start up our server, we'll have a persistent store. So whatever we add here will become uh, added to the Redis database so that when we go back to our home page, it'll appear there in our translations and it'll be persistent. So this is all really great. But what if you still want to use the YAML file for some translations? Well, here I want to show you how you can fall back to this YAML file if the translations aren't available in the key value store. So to do this, I need to make some changes to our initializer where we're setting the back end here. What I want to do is add a new back end called a chain back end. So I'll inst instantiate a chain back end here. And any back ends that you pass into this will be called respectively um, to determine which one first responds to a given translation key. So if we pass in our Redis backend first, and then our default one later, which will be the YAML file that we supply, then it will first check our Redis database and see if it exists there. If not, it'll fall back to our YAML file and use that translation. Now the only problem with this is that it makes it more difficult to access our key value store directly, which in this case is our Redis database. So if you're doing this, I recommend moving this out into some kind of constant. We can say translation store and set our Redis database into there. And we can use this constant wherever we need to access our translation store, such as inside the translations controller. I can no longer use backend store here because I'm going through a chain. So I'll just use that constant there so that way we're able to access it. 
All right, let's try this out. I removed our translations, so as you can see, if I go to this translations page, nothing's here. And if I go to our home page, you can see it says welcome because it's falling back to the YAML file. If I go back to our translations page and add a, a welcome here, um, just say hello. And then go back to our home page. It will now say hello because it's now using the one in the Redis database. All right, that's it for this episode. It's really nice that we can now edit the translations through a web interface rather than having to go through the YAML file every time. Now you'd probably want to um, clean up this admin interface a lot, really improve the user experience if you're having someone edit translations on here all the time. But this is just more of an example of how it can work. Now if you want more information on this topic, I highly recommend you check out the book Crafting Rails Applications by Jose Valim. Uh, they're not paying me to say this, I just really appreciate the book and it was a great help in putting this episode together and I think it's a, a good resource for any advanced Rails developer.